enabled by the invention of the electric paragraph. The absolute block system was the most important single development in railway signaling technology and was widely used the world over for more than a hundred years until more modern systems replaced it. During that time, semaphore signals and the signal boxes that controlled them became a familiar sight on railways large and small, from country branch lines to bustling termini, from long stretches of main line to complex junctions. The absolute block system kept trains moving and passengers safe for generations. In this film, we will see how to deploy signals of the absolute block type to regulate a railway network efficiently. The basic premise of absolute block signaling is simple. Only one train may occupy a section of track at any one time. With the block reservation display enabled, we will see that a train will not pass a stop signal until the train ahead has passed the next stop signal. The design of stop signals changed over time, but their function remained the same. To tell the driver whether the train may proceed, or must wait behind the signal. This is an early lower quadrant semaphore stop signal from the 1860s. When the arm is horizontal and the night lamp is red, the signal is at danger and the train may not pass. When the arm is angled down at 45 degrees and the night lamp is white, the signal is all clear and the train may proceed. This later lower quadrant signal from the 1880s is the same as the earlier signal, except that the all clear aspect is now green instead of white. The increase of artificial lighting by this time had made it necessary to use a colored lamp so as not to confuse drivers. This is an upper quadrant semaphore stop signal from the 1920s. At danger, it looks the same as the lower quadrant signal but when showing all clear, the arm is raised rather than lowered by 45 degrees. Here is a color light signal. The red lamp indicates danger and the green lamp all clear. These could only be used above ground when electric lamps powerful enough to be seen in bright sunlight were invented. However, without the glare of daylight, Underground signals such as these could use paraffin lamps to show red or green lights to the drivers in narrow tunnels where there was no room for a semaphore arm. The absolute block signaling is about more than placing a succession of stop signals. Each signal must be controlled from a nearby signal box. This is a small signal box suitable for use on a plain track section where only a few signals are needed on each line. This is a medium-sized signal box, suitable for use at a small station or a minor junction. And this is a large signal box, suitable for use at a large station or a major junction. Every signal built must be connected to a signal box, and the larger signal boxes can accommodate more signals than the smaller signal boxes. Because the signalman must be able to see the tail lamp of each train passing the signal box's window in order to know when to clear the signals, the signals must be placed near the signal box that controls them. In later times, the invention of track circuits, electrically operated semaphore signals, and color light signals allow signals to be placed a little farther from the signal box than is possible in the early years, but the maximum distance will still be much smaller than with later systems such as track circuit box signaling. Because signal boxes are costly to build and maintain, it is therefore important to balance the capacity of the line, which can be improved by adding more signals, against the expense of doing so. 
in many cases, it will make sense to build a line with long spaces between signal boxes, which can be filled in with more signals and signal boxes later on if the traffic on the line grows to justify. Drivers are trained to know where all the signals on their route are located, but can only see whether a signal is clear up to 875 meters, that is 7 tiles at 125 meters per tile ahead. This distance can be reduced by tunnels, gradients, overbridges, or corners. Most trains traveling at speed in any event cannot stop within 875 meters. Therefore, unless a driver has some way of knowing in advance whether a signal is at clear or at danger, trains will need to slow down before every signal, whether at danger or not, which will lose valuable time. The solution to this is to use distance signals. This is an early distance signal. Notice that the finial on top of the signal is white to distinguish it from the stop signal, which has a red finial. When the arm is angled downwards, the signal is at clear. This tells the driver that all the stop signals ahead, controlled by the same signal box as the distance signal, are also at clear. When the arm is horizontal, the signal is at caution. This tells the driver that one of the stop signals ahead controlled by the same signal box as the distance signal is at danger. Only in the 1910s were signal arms of distance signals painted the now familiar yellow to distinguish them from stop signals, and the red lamps were replaced with yellow lamps. In color light signals, such as this underground signal or this above ground signal, the yellow lamp indicates caution and the green lamp indicates all clear. Make sure also to leave enough space between the distant and stop signals, or else the distant signals will not do much good, and the train will have to begin to slow down in case the stop signal is at danger before the driver can see the distant signal. For the same reason, make sure to put the distant signals in a good place, preferably before rather than after, features such as corners, which will block a driver's vision ahead. This is a combined signal, consisting of a distant signal and stop signal, on the same signal post. It is for use when the space between signal boxes is so short that the distance signal of the next signal box needs to occupy the same space as the stop signal from the previous signal box. Therefore, the stop arm is controlled by the box in the rear and the distant arm is controlled by the box in front. Make sure that the combined signal is placed within range of the box in front or else the distant arm will not function and trains will treat it as being always at caution. Because a signal box may control more than one stop signal heading in the same direction, a train may have to slow down for each stop signal controlled by the same signal box if it has passed a distance signal at caution. Only with the track circuit block and later signaling systems do signals always indicate the state of the next signal upon the line. However, with special equipment available from the 1910s onwards, it is possible to create an intermediate block, a pair of signals, stop and distant controlled by the same signal box, where the distance signal works independently of the signal box's main distance signal. This means that extra capacity can be added to a busy line without adding extra signal boxes. These are intermediate block semaphore signals. Notice the electrical cabinets next to the signal necessary for the equipment to actuate the signal remotely. Intermediate block signals can also be color light signals. These signals, which work with track circuits, can be placed farther from a signal box than mechanical absolute block signals, but must still be within the signal box's overall range. However, only one set of intermediate block signals are permitted for each signal box in each direction, either in front or in rear. Full automatic signaling requires signals and signal boxes of the track circuit block or a later type. Unless there is a train approaching and its route is clear, signals in the absolute block working method will remain at danger at all times. This is especially important at junctions. At a junction, a signal will not show all clear unless a route for the approaching train can be reserved through the whole junction for the next stop signal. 
the blocked reservation display shows these reserved routes. We can see that once a route is reserved, no other route may be reserved occupying the same pieces of track until the train that reserved it has safely passed on its way. Approaching a station with multiple platforms or a diverging route, a junction signal can be used. This allows the train to be routed to any free platform rather than only allowing it to be routed to the platform listed in its schedule. In this semaphore junction signal, the main arm showing clear means that the train has been routed to its scheduled platform. And the subsidiary arm showing clear means that the train has been routed to a different platform. These color light junction signals show the driver whether the train is routed off its scheduled path by a white indicator above the main lamp, although the different indications are too small to be visible in simutrains. Placing an end of choose sign sets a limit beyond which the train will not search for a free route. They are useful in stopping trains from taking undesirable routes at stations. Junction signals can also be used where the train is not stopping at the next station to allow trains to take any free route rather than just the shortest route to the next end of choose sign. This can be useful in the case of passing loops or where a train is scheduled to pass through without stopping at a busy station. When trains start having stopped at a station or a good siding, they return to the drive by sight working method unless there is a signal on the platform that they occupy facing in the direction in which they are about to travel. In the absolute block working method, it is necessary to have a signal on each individual platform or siding road. Trains will not move off from the platform or siding until a route is clear and can continue to load whilst waiting for a clear signal. Single track operation is not possible in the absolute block working method without special token equipment. Single track operation will be dealt with in another film on token block signaling. There are also some special signals which allow more than one train into the same section so long as there is no junction before the next signal, but we will look in more detail at permissive block working in a later film. This film has demonstrated the basic principles and the important details of the absolute block signaling system. With this knowledge, you will be able to signal railway networks large and small in the absolute block era with confidence and efficiency.